Have you heard Jesus is coming back for his bride? And the spirit and the bride say, come. Read Revelation 22, 17. And who's the bride? Read Ephesians 5, 27. Visit the website now. And the spirit and the bride say, come.org. Mail correspondence to And the spirit and the bride say, come. P.O. Box 210, Stone Mountain, Georgia, 30086. Or send an email to info at And the spirit and the bride say, come.org. Praise God, praise God, praise God, and welcome to our broadcast today. We thank the Lord for this opportunity once again to be with you in our broadcast. I'm your broadcast announcer, Elder David Mars, and our broadcast is in the spirit and the bride say come. We always like to begin our broadcast with a prayer. Would you pray with us today? Father God, we thank you for this opportunity once again that you've allowed us to come before your people. We pray that you would bless the broadcast Someone may be healed, saved, and delivered through your word. We claim the victory in Jesus' name. Amen. And thank you, Jesus. Well, my friend, here we are again, announcing that Jesus is on his way back for his bride. Not a fiancé, not a girlfriend, and not a social partner, but he's on his way back for his church without a spot and a wrinkle. Our broadcast is entitled today, Sailing In uncharted waters, sailing in uncharted waters. You know, one of the greatest lessons that I ever learned since I've been in Pentecost was taught me by one of the old church mothers of the church. I'll never forget it. She taught me something a long time ago. And what she taught me, she said, son, let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. What anybody actually knows about the Lord, actually knows about him, will not fill up a thimble. Did you hear me? This mother told me something. She said, what well, anybody actually knows, actually knows about the Lord, will not fill up a thimble will not fill up a thimble. She told me that. And at the time, I did not understand what she was saying. But as I got older, it came to me exactly what she was saying. What she was saying is that when it comes to actually knowing about the Lord, what we know about the Lord and what we don't know about him will fit in a thimble. Will fit in a thimble, my friend. In other words, she was telling me that we are all sailing in uncharted waters. You don't believe that? Go to 2 Corinthians, the fifth chapter, and the seventh verse, it'll tell us about those uncharted waters. Listen to what it says. For we walk by faith, not by sight. My friend, that's uncharted waters right there. We don't see it. We walk by faith. Uncharted waters. Now, I know what you might be saying in your mind. I know you might be disagreeing with what I am saying, but think about it. When we give the impression sometimes that we have actually been to heaven, glory to God, and received a private interview from the Lord, what impressions are we sending out? Look at the TV. And then on top of that, when we go into a bookstore, a Bible bookstore, and we see commentaries filling up the bookstore, but we don't see the Bible display, then we ask the clerk, where is the Bible? Oh, they're back there in the corner. 
but yet the commentaries that are written by men and what man know about the Lord is filling up the bookstore. My Lord, let me know we might be sailing in uncharted waters. Then when we consider the fact that none of us have been here before. We haven't been here before. This is our first time being here. Methuselah, I believe the Bible said, was 969 years old. But what Methuselah learned was when he got here and what he knew about the Lord in 969 years would not fill up, glory to God, this thimble. The Lord had to straighten Job out. Job got beside himself and going to let the Lord know what he knew. And the Lord said, wait a minute, Job. Let me ask you a question. Where were you when I hung the stars in the sky? When I put the clouds up there and told them, don't come down, stay up there. Where were you? My friend, we might be sailing in uncharted waters. Oh, yes. Oh, yes, sailing in uncharted water. Now, listen, there's nothing new under the sun. As far back as the 15th and the 16th century, the world's bravest and courageous men and women have dared to sail in uncharted water, waters that had not been plotted, investigated, or explored. That happened a long time ago, all the way back to the 15th and the 16th century. Look what history say. According to history, on December the 5th, 1914, an Irish explorer by the name of Ernest Shackleton, along with 27 of his comrades, his crew, one stowaway, 69 dogs, and one tomcat, set out sailing in uncharted water. And where were they going? They were going to the Antarctica, looking for the South Pole. Oh, yes. Check it out for yourself. Sailing in uncharted waters. And history said, two days in the sail, they entered into the pack ice. Now, the pack ice is a thick barrier of sea ice that stands guard around the whole continent of Antarctica. And they hid it and went in in uncharted waters. History says suddenly the waters contracted and pushed the sea ice against the ship and stuck the ship. The ship could not go forward or it could not go backward. It was stuck in a pack ice of sea in the Antarctic Circle. One of the crew members described it like this, as being frozen like an almond in the middle of a chocolate bar. They were stuck in uncharted waters. And after drifting, for months on this pack ice, stuck. For months, the pack ice split beneath them. And the ship was ready to go down. They had to scramble and get in lifeboats and wind up in the middle of the ocean. That happened in 1914. Sailing in uncharted waters. Fortunately, they were able to navigate through the dangerous waters. And they found an island by the name of Elephant Island. And they got to this island. But it didn't end there. After 128 days, they stayed on this island and they were finally rescued sailing in uncharted waters. But wait a minute. 
The story isn't over. What about us sailing in uncharted waters? You see, uncharted waters is not only physical, it's non-physical. Maybe our waters is of a different persuasion. Go to 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter, and the 46th verse. 1 Corinthians 15 and 46 verse. Listen to this. Don't get our waters mixed up. Listen at the scripture. How be it that was not first, which is spiritual, but that which is natural, and afterward, that which is spiritual. Did you hear that, my friend? Maybe our waters is not natural. Maybe they are spiritual. Spiritual waters that we're about to enter into. Just maybe. Could it be? Listen to this. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Listen. Could it be the bride of Christ? The church the body of Christ is about to sail in uncharted waters, not in the Arctic Circle or searching for the South Pole, but waters that are uncharted in Jesus Christ. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you. Are we about to sail into uncharted waters the scripture backs it up. We walk not by sight. We walk by faith. These explorers have discovered naturally. But are we about to go in uncharted water in Jesus Christ? Woo! Glory to Hallelujah. Thank you. Uncharted waters in Jesus Christ. Is there such a thing as uncharted waters in Jesus Christ? Have everything been discovered? Do man know everything about the Lord? Is there no more territory, no more sea, no more waters to be discovered in Jesus Christ? Is there such a thing? Hallelujah. Glory to God. Think about it. Think about it. You said this couldn't be because look around at how things are happening right here in the United States, all over the world. This couldn't be uncharted waters in Jesus Christ. We've been to the moon. We've searched the seas. We've conquered territory. How could there be uncharted <laughs> waters in Jesus Christ? My friend, think about it. Is it possible? Well, let me tell you something. Don't ask man whether it's possible. Don't ask him. No. Uh-uh. Don't ask man whether it's impossible or whether it is possible. Because what man knows about the mystery of the Lord will not fill up a thimble. I don't care what theological school we've attended, what we have behind our names, Dr. Divinities, that still does not tell us we know everything about the Lord. Glory to Hallelujah. Glory to God. Can the bride of Christ, the church, be about to sell in uncharted water in Jesus Christ. Think about it. Waters that are so uncharted that they have not even entered into the heart of man. Does that sound like uncharted water? It sounds like it to me. We're on our way to one of the greatest discoveries that will ever happen, my friend. Don't get caught up in this worldly system because there's uncharted water in Jesus Christ. 
Listen to what the Bible said. First Corinthians 2 and 9. Uh oh. First Corinthians 2 and 9. Listen to what it said. You need to get your Bible on this right here. Hallelujah. But as it is written, I have not seen. Glory to God. Eyes ain't seen where we're finna sell into in Jesus Christ. Woo! Glory. Hallelujah. Nor ye heard. Man ain't even heard of it. Hmm. Ain't even heard of it. My friend, I'm excited. I'm not worried about what I see around going around. We're about to sell into it. It hasn't been heard. Ears ain't heard. Neither have it entered in the heart. It have not even entered into the heart of men. Where we are finna sell in uncharted waters in Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. The things which God has prepared for them that love him. I got to read that again. Oh yes. But as it is written, I have not seen nor ear heard Neither have it entered into the heart of men the thing that God has prepared for them that love him. My friend, we're about to sell in uncharted waters in Jesus Christ. That's where the bride of Christ is headed. That's where the church is headed. I don't care what the world say. We're not going around and around on the merry-go-round. We are on our way to uncharted waters in Jesus Christ. Mm. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Uncharted waters in Jesus Christ. Listen to this, though. Hallelujah. But it's located. These waters are located in uncharted waters. And the navigator is Jesus Christ. We cannot sell into these uncharted waters in Jesus without Jesus navigating us through them. And that's the hindrance of the world. They don't want any navigation from Jesus. Oh, glory. Hallelujah. They would rather navigate themselves. And that is the cause of what's going on now. Lost in uncharted waters, sailing around, getting caught in pack ice. The tricks of the devil, the device of the devil, getting caught in his traps time and time again because we are refusing the navigation of Jesus Christ. We're headed, my friend. We're headed. Right now, hallelujah, the church is marching. Bible said in Revelation 19 and 7, Rejoice, for the marriage supper of the Lamb is come, and his wife have made herself ready. The church is making herself ready for this voyage. The old ship of Zion glory, woo, is about to sail. Been singing that song for generations. The old ship of Zion have never lost a passenger. King Jesus is the captain of the ship. And he knows how to navigate the waters. He's been there before. He died and he got up. And he knows every danger in the water, my friend. Hallelujah. Look out. Hallelujah. The bride of Christ sailing in uncharted waters. We're walking by faith and not by sight. We don't know the waters. We don't know what's around the corner. What awaits us. As we sail through. But King Jesus knows the way my friend. 
And the only way that he can navigate for us is in us. Uh oh, look out. Whew. He must be in us. His spirit must be in us in order to na navigate for us. We must receive him as our Lord and Savior. No other way. There is no name written under heaven whereby men shall be saved other than the name of Jesus Christ. Listen at me. We're going to need him. Sooner or later, dangerous waters will come. The time to prepare for war is in the time of peace. Don't wait till we get caught in the pack ice. Receive him right now. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Woo. Yes, 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 yes. I see it in the spirit of his word. Thank God for the opportunity that I have to see what he's doing. I have not seen it. Ears have not heard it. It has not entered into the heart of man. Glory. Hallelujah. The good thing that's in store for them that love the Lord. Praise God. We thank the Lord today. If you're here, just bow your head and you want Jesus to be the navigator of your ship. Bow your head with me. Father God, we thank you for the opportunity to even come before you. We're not worthy, but we thank you. We come asking you to navigate for us. Save our souls. Come into us. We believe you. We confess with our mouth and we repent in the name of Jesus. We pray. Amen and thank you, Jesus. Well, my friend, you're on your way. You're on your way. He promised to never leave us. He promised to never leave us. In times of distress, he will navigate us to safety. Every time, in the name of Jesus, we believe it. We thank you for tuning in and being with us today. We're excited. Oh, glory, are we excited about what the Lord is doing in these last days. Please follow us. You can reach us on our website in the spirit of the bride say come .org. Go to the contact page, click on the links, Facebook, YouTube, Instagram. If you happen to go to YouTube, please subscribe to the channel. Click on the notification bell. It will allow us and enable us to continue with these broadcasts. Hallelujah. Never forget, my friend, be excited that this is about to happen. It's coming, my friend. This is real. It's real. The Bible declares it so. And we're excited because we're on our way. We're on our way to that great new Jerusalem. That's where we had it. And we're living in the blessed faith that we're going to meet one day. Let us go to the new Jerusalem. Oh, the spirit and the bride say come. We will all sing a brand new song. Let us go to the new Right.
spirit and the bride say, come, let us go to the new Jerusalem. We will all sing a brand new song. We will all sing a brand new song. Oh, the spirit and the bride say, come, let us go. Oh, 